From breaking news to trending topics, we cover it all in a way that is both informative and engaging. Whether it's politics, entertainment or global affairs, So This Happened has you covered. My name is Margaret Estazua and you are welcome to the show. Now to the first story. The much anticipated Easter celebration turned into a nightmare for some and their families as armed men attacked and looted a luxury bus filled with passengers on their way to the southeast. The incident took place at Okeada Junction, Ijebu Mushi and along the Ijebu Debini Expressway. The passengers, looking forward to the joyous festivities, were instead subjected to a harrowing ordeal at the hands of ruthless hoodlums. After robbing the passengers of their belongings, the criminals carelessly set the bus on fire, leaving the travellers stranded and traumatised. The 59-seater bus, operated by Ifesenachi Transport Limited, became a scene of chaos and despair as the passengers recounted the horrific events that unfolded that night. Hmm. In a video shared on social media by Wanchuda Inamdi, a passenger described the terrifying experience of being attacked in the dead of night during their journey back home for Easter celebrations. The passengers were stripped off their possessions, some left half naked, while others suffered injuries from the violent attack. The spokesperson for the Ongu State Police Command, the SP Omolola Udutola, confirmed the incident, highlighting the brutality of the armed robbery that took place on that fateful night. Despite the trauma and loss suffered by the passengers, they expressed the gratitude that no lives were lost in the attack. Now, as the victims try to come to terms with the ordeal they faced, the disturbing incident serves as a reminder of the dangers lurking on the roads during festive seasons. You see, the passengers left with nothing but their harrowing memories are left to pick up the pieces and rebuild their shattered sense of security. It is imperative that the security agencies swiftly track down these hoodlums and take stringent action against them. While it is acknowledged that times are tough, it is inexcusable for anyone to resort to violence and theft, causing harm and stripping innocent people of their belongings. You see, the brazenness and brutality of this armed robbery during a time meant for celebration is a clear indication of the disregard for law and other that plagues our society. And I think that it should be looked into. Now, we move on to the next story. It may seem as though the PDP and the APC seem to be entangled in a relationship that is both complex and unavoidable. You see, like lovers who hate each other, but uh, they cannot stay away from each other. These political parties continue to engage in power struggles and conflicts that ultimately impact the governance and stability of River State. Now, the People's Democratic Party has strongly criticized the River State House of Assembly and the All Progressive Congress for the alleged attempt to pressure Governor Simfu Bara into acting outside the bounds of the law. The PDP has deemed the renewed threat of the impeachment against Fubara by the lawmakers as not only embarrassing but also a public nuisance to the state. This condemnation was articulated in a statement released in Port Harcourt by the PDP Publicity Secretary Sidney Barra. Now, you would recall that the 27 lawmakers reportedly loyal to the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yen Samwike, had announced on Sunday, March 31st, 2024, that they might reconsider impeaching Fubara as a final measure to fulfill their duties and uphold the Constitution. <laughs> Speaker of the House, Martin Amawule, conveyed this message to the press accusing Fubara of acting unlawfully despite his endorsement of the presidential peace agreement aimed at resolving the political crisis in the state. Amawule also highlighted the absence of an approved budget as a concern. In response, Bara urged the lawmakers who he claimed had switched allegiance from the PDP to the APC without consulting their constituents to cease disrupting the peace of the state and allow Fubara focus on governance and fulfilling his mandate to the people. In simpler words, he basically told the lawmakers to stop being such drama kings and let Fubara do his job. He reminded the led lawmakers that the issue of the legitimacy is currently under judicial review. 
Barra Ford that criticized the lawmakers for enacting regressive laws and making statements detrimental to the growth and progress of the state. He also addressed allegations by the acting chairman of the APC in the state, Chief Tony Okocha, regarding Fubara's alleged non-compliance with an eight-point peace accord brokered by President Bola Tinubu, noting that the matter is subject to litigation. <laughs> well, it seems like Fubara can't catch a break. It's Fubara here, Fubara there. But you see, Barra stands on whether Fubara has indeed been allowed to focus on governance at Mr. Ongoing controversies involving the APC and the threat of impeachment poses a serious question. What do you guys think? Now, as we make it a wrap, guys, you won't believe what's been going down in Ghana recently. So get this. A 12-year-old girl was told to up her sex appeal and dress teasingly for her new husband, who happens to be a 63-year-old priest. Yep, you heard that right. These influential traditional priests, Numo Bokate Lawesuru the 13th, tied the knot with the young teen in a customary ceremony. And get this, it's considered one of the most powerful people in their community. But here's where it gets even crazier. In footage and pictures circulating online, community members were seen encouraging the girl to dress provocatively and use gifted perfume to attract the priest. As expected, the priest is facing some serious backlash from outsiders, but community leaders are quick to defend the tradition, claiming that people just don't understand their customs. One local leader, Nebo Teiko Fifrankwa II, explained that the girl has been preparing for this role for six years, all while juggling her education. And get this, that's not all. She's also set to undergo a second purification ceremony to fully embrace her role as the priest wife. Oh, and did I mention that procreation and childbirth are considered crucial parts of this role for the 12-year-old? Yeah, it's a lot to take in. Needless to say, this whole child marriage tradition in Ghana has sparked outrage among Ghanaians. Interestingly, this is the fate of every one in 10 girls in West and Central Africa as they are married up before turning 15. On a broader scale, four out of 10 girls are married off before 18. <laughs> Central and West Africa have the highest prevalence of child marriages in the world. What a feat to lead at. Definitely, whatever is being done by the government of Ghana and other Central and Western African countries isn't enough. All hands will be required to deal with this human right abuse head on. Because no matter how I try to process this story, it doesn't seem right in my head. However, how is it turning out in yours? Do let me know what you think.